Hello, I'm Douglas Johnson, and welcome to Day Tripping. So last week, I posted a video about the Los Angeles Air Raid Sirens and their civil defense system, uh, but it went a little long, so I cut it in half, and last week's video covered the period of time between the bombing of Pearl Harbor all the way up to the end of World War II, 1945, when that siren system just wasn't needed anymore. But there was another war brewing. It was called the Cold War, and uh, that was between the United States and Russia. So it wasn't long until uh, there was now a threat of nuclear annihilation, where at any moment, um, Russia was going to wipe out the United States. And, you know, being a child of the 80s, I definitely remember that there was always this threat of nuclear annihilation in the back of your head, and they constantly reminded us that it was there. Um, I believe there was a movie called The Day After that came out in the 80s that uh, basically t represented what it would be like uh, living through a nuclear uh, attack, um, which would have been on a huge, a whole different scale than what we uh, knew, had seen with uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. One millisecond takes you beyond imagining, beyond tomorrow, and into the day after. In the 50s, the, uh, the sirens were reactivated, and um, according to the article, 165 newer models were added. That doesn't mean 165 different models. It was probably 165 uh, total model uh, sirens were added to the system, and these would have probably most likely been uh, the SD-10s and the 500Ts, and uh, probably a couple more of those Model 5s, but primarily SD-10s, because those are the ones I see when I go out on the walks. I think so far it's been like 80% SD-10s. Uh, again, I'm sure somebody will let me know uh, exactly which ones were, were when, and, and you have told me, and from what I understand though, the SD-10s were the major ones that they put in during the 80s, uh, I'm sorry, the 50s, uh, 60s, 70s, uh, and into the 80s. So yeah, uh, which look like this. So, um, but now when these sirens went off, it wasn't that the planes were going to come overhead and you were going to shoot them down with anti-aircraft guns. It, uh, it meant uh, a nuclear missile was coming. And uh, yeah, you should run for cover and get into your, your, your fallout shelter. Um, not really sure uh, how well that would have worked out for people. But, you know, these are the type of videos that they, uh, they, 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 they played to promote uh, what would happen during uh, a nuclear attack in the 50s and 60s. Let, let, let me put this widescreen for, for a minute. Taking shelter may be a race against time, even when you have some advance warning. But possibly, there may be no time. An attack could come without warning. The sky would suddenly light up. If a doorway is right at hand, use it. If the nearest shelter is more than a couple of steps away, fall to the ground immediately. I personally think that a lot of this was basically just to make people feel better. Make them feel like, oh, we have a chance, and as long as I follow these precautions, um, I might survive this thing. Uh, and, and I plan on, and you know, researching this, I, I kind of stumbled over a lot of these air raid shelter things. So I plan on doing another video in the future about the, um, the uh, air raid shelters, not air raid shelters, the fallout shelters, and the, um, the, the evacuation plan that Los Angeles had uh, at the time during, that was started like in the mid 50s and uh, continued up and through uh, the late 60s. Uh, but I'm gonna do that in another video. And um, yeah, it's, it's some fascinating stuff that was out there. So, uh, but let's get back to, to our civil defense story here. So yeah, so the sirens came back on in the 50s and these were for um, nuclear missile warning sirens, essentially. Um, and this lasted until the 80s. Um, and anybody that was living in Los Angeles at the time, uh, whenever I tell them about these air raid siren videos that I do or the air raid siren walks that I do, they all remember uh, the tests that happened. Um, and they're usually not certain on when exactly they happen, but I'll tell you, because according to the article, it was the last Friday of each month at 10 a.m. for two minutes, they would test the sirens. And yeah, they, everybody's got a story about hearing the sirens and, uh, and where they lived and where the sirens were. Uh, it was just part of their, their youth, um, which, is, which is awesome. Because I, I grew up in, in New York, uh, Long Island, New York, where they used the sirens for the, um, the volunteer fire department. 
and every day, and I think it was noon, they would test these things, and uh, and we were in school, and we had one right outside our high school. So um, <laughs> at about noon, teacher had to stop teaching, and we just had to wait for this siren to to, to go off, uh, and it, it was loud, man. It's like we couldn't even goof off because the siren was just too loud. But uh, but yeah, so it's it's a memory I have that um, that I can relate to uh, with people that grew up here in Los Angeles. But that all came to an end in the mid '80s. Uh, supposedly, um, the sheriff uh, at the time, uh, Peter Pitch Pitches, P-I-T-S-H-E-S-S, -S -S, again, I'll put the title up, um, reported that the sirens were vir virtually useless. And um, by the early 80s, the federal government had stopped providing uh, uh, money for the upkeep of these sirens. And um, they were finding it more and more to find parts and, and, and keep them working. And they did a study and it determined it was going to be about $250,000 to take them down. So that's why they're all still up there. They just, they wanted to save money. So it's like, just turn them off, leave them there. They're not going anywhere. They'll be fine. And uh, now they're just part of the landscape. It's just one of those things. You come to Los Angeles, uh, you think about, you're going to go see the Hollywood star, you know, the, the, the walk of fame with the stars on the ground. You're going to see the Hollywood sign. Uh, you're going to go to Santa Monica and see the, the beach. Um, and, uh, you're also going to, if you look for them, you're also going to see, you know, the sirens from the civil defense system of both World War II and the Cold War. Uh, and, and it's something you can only see, I believe, uh, uh, in such abundance here in Los Angeles. So, yeah, it's another thing to look forward to when you come in, uh, and, and travel and visit Los Angeles. And I'm not saying that sarcastically. I think people should look for it and, and go home and take pictures of, of the sirens, just like they would take a picture of the stars or the Hollywood sign. That's just me. Uh, so, yeah, so by, um, <clears throat> so by January of uh, 1985, uh, the order was uh, by, so by January of 1985, the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors uh, shut the whole system down. Uh, so that's when the sirens would have went quiet forever. Uh, January 1985. Um, and part of their reasoning was that, well, uh, they had phones, and then uh, I don't know if page they. I, it says pagers, but I had a pager in the nineties. Uh, it was like ninety five, so this has been ten years before that. But again, cellular paging systems, and then eventually text messaging, blogs, all that other stuff. So it was just other ways of informing people um, than 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 a, than a siren. Um, you know, like today we all have our phones, so why not just. You know, send a message on the phone. You know, I get all the time. I get um, Amber alerts. Uh, I get city civil alerts. Um, all kinds of alerts just happen to buzz away here. Uh, some earthquake. I think there was a big earthquake recently. They got an earthquake alert. Uh, so yeah, so we all, these things are like a ball and chain. So why not take advantage of modern technology? So again, I can understand why they went out of out of use. Uh, the last time the uh, any of them went off um, was in, I want to say 2018 when uh, they did it for like a musical installation and only a couple of them went off. The one downtown near the, uh, the um, city hall, that one went off and a couple others, I think one in Griffith Park and, and whatnot. But yeah, uh, there's really no need for them. And the only reason why I can see them uh, putting them off is if um, we go back to war or um, they just want to do it for some sort of celebration or... Um, centennial event for World War II or, or, or something like that. Maybe in the 100th year of uh, VJ Day, they will um, they'll launch off in 20, uh, let's see, what was the date here again? January 15th, what was it? August 14th, uh, 2045. Maybe they'll, they'll, they'll go off again. Because what I'm told is um, these guys, they're, they're still in a good shape and they're still, you could still use them. Uh, the, they don't quite rust and, and, and and uh, and break down quite as easily as as I as I thought they would. So anyway, that is a little history of the civil defense system here in Los Angeles. Uh, I hope I made sense, and I hope you learned something. Um, and I hope I didn't babble and go all over the place on this one. If you like what I'm doing, um, and you're interested in day tripping, you're interested in going out and exploring the the Los Angeles, right now it's Los Angeles, uh, and and seeing the architecture and, and knowing about the history and learning about the people and learning about air raid sirens, uh, then please subscribe to my channel and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any future uh, 
videos coming out. Uh, I'm hoping to do more and more now. And um, yeah, also leave comments. Remember, comments. I love reading the comments and I love learning new things. So until then, until next time, everybody stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you for watching.